Hey, how you doing, Max? Mm, I'm good. So uh, this week, what we're going to be doing is talking about the things, the ideas that we really wish machine manufacturers would add to their espresso machines. And I've got a doozy. I've got a doozy. But bear in mind, a doozy is a good one, by the way. Uh, And I have got um, the advantage over you because you're hampered, hamstrung, dare I say, with... Yeah, you are. You've got a, a handicap that you're running, which is called IQ or, you know, practical science application. Like you're going to be thinking about things, thinking, well, that'll be difficult to do. That's basically breaking the rules of physics. Uh, whereas I am not limited by any such thoughts. I can simply come out with fantastic, brilliant ideas because that's my job, right? The yeah, ideas yeah, yeah. guy. And, and then, then it's and then there is a scientist that has to, to convince you that that's not really a good idea. No, it, the scientist Actually, has to just do it, it, right? Right. I don't know. I, Are you that rich? I, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. But once I patent these ideas, yeah. Mm-hmm. So actually talking about patenting, patenting is something you can do in America on anything. Uh, yeah. Over in Europe and especially in the UK, I think Germany as well, it's quite hard to get patent uh, laws passed. You can get patents uh, through. Well, yeah, patents in the UK patent. is one of the most difficult. Yes, countries. it's very stringent, but the, it's also it means that you have a higher, um, it's um, a higher protection. Yeah, it's more protection because you'll protect you like every other country will accept your patent. But from a commercial point of view, if America is an important market to you, it doesn't matter whether you've got the world's best protection. You get it in America. And what happens is because it's too expensive for a lot of companies to make different versions of their systems, Mm -hmm. as long as it works in the US, job done. And an example of that was a German company a few months ago. We did a story on the Bar Talks website, bartalks.net. Uh, about uh, a German company which is suing Nespresso in the USA for the ability to read a barcode. So basically what they say was, we've got this very advanced system, which Nespresso basically stole from us. And you read the story and it goes, and I actually read the patent. I actually Mm -hmm. went on and actually looked at the patent. And it's just thousands of words of waffle that basically says there's a barcode. It reads the barcode and then decides what coffee to make. And I'm like, isn't that like, if, you, if you're going to uphold that patent, every girl that you see or guy that goes around the supermarkets with a little scanner that scans it and basically tells you what it is and when to take it off the shelf, all of that. But ah, it's all of it. It's all like, no, oh, that's all very secret it's source. Probably, it's probably a little more advanced than that. Probably. No, it's not what I read in the patent. I read the patent, Max. Did you read the patent? Um, I, know, I rest I my can case. Assume. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking today. Before we do talk about the thing that we're talking about, uh, we need to talk about something else, which is yes. uh, that we got the last week of the giveaway of the farm to home coffee. Mm-hmm. Wow! Act shocked and amazed. You, it's coming from a farm. It Do- goes from the farm to your home. Wow! Uh, it's brought literally on the farm directly to your home on the back of a donkey. Yeah, uh, so which is very well catered for. So it will take a while. Um, yeah, the beans yeah. will probably have sprouted into trees by then. But but by the but time they the get here, side, you don't have to wait a week for uh, for 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 it to degas. But you can get Amazon Prime uh, effective version of it, uh, where they will they will make the donkey work really hard. <laughs> They, where they, where they will donkey me, all the way over to where they will, where they will feed the, the coffee to the donkey. They will, yes, the, the donkey will be out of its mind on caffeine. And yeah, it would just be really fast. Yeah, it would just be hyper wired and go like. All right, I can already see these. This coffee company is regretting the decision uh, to work with us on this. Um, yeah, yeah. But it, they it's are. Go, it's going to be like like us in, in, when we get new coffees. It's like, how many coffees have you had? Mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting through a lot of a lot of coffee very quickly at the moment. I'm going to start having. I'm going to put a camera up and just see how many coffees my son makes because I think he's. Um, <laughs> I think that's what he lives on. CCTV. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'll have I put a little notice up that'll keep it legal. I'll be like, you know, that maybe just ask him just just ask him what does sounds look like. Yeah, and he and he, uh, yeah, and when his eyes knows. are like that, if you ever saw the fabulous Mister Fox or whatever it was yeah. with, with George Clooney, if he knows, then all sorted. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so farm to farm to home coffee. Uh, we're giving away a kilo 
uh, cause we're not miserly people and we don't give no, away no. like, you know, hundred grams or 250 grams. And we give away a whole kilo. Cause we know that, you know, when you like a coffee, you really want to like, let that thing continue. It's like a good book that ends yes. too quickly. You know, no one wants that. A 250 gram bag of coffee is like a good book that's over just as it gets good. So you get a kilo, you get the full thing. You get the, the Lord of the Rings version of the coffee uh, with this, <laughs> with us. You get a fantasy, but without fantasy the, book version. But with a better ending. Uh, yeah, with a better rendering. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing the Ethiopian. So go look it up and go look them up because I think I've tried all of their coffees. Um, they got Uganda, Tanzania, just finished the killer of the Tanzania, the Ethiopian and Rwandan. Uh, so that's fantastic. Side note, story last week on bartalks.net uh, is Uganda just produced their biggest uh, crop of coffee ever which is actually pretty amazing. I was talking to one of the guys working out there for USAID, which is an organization um, from the US that gives aid, I think, to companies that based on a lot of projects. Yeah, I think that kind of, the name kind of gives it away. Yeah, I was just clarifying it for, uh, for a few people. <laughs> um, and, for our American uh, cousins. <laughs> I guess when we wrote it was the biggest harvest in 30 years, and he actually wrote back to me, and he said, actually, Nick, it's the biggest harvest ever. Uh, that we've ever had in Uganda. So that's pretty incredible. Great time to be getting their coffee from Uganda and supporting them. Um, out, in, uh, out in Brazil, for those, this is the last piece of news. Uh, Brazil is still struggling with all sorts of problems on, uh, for their coffee. So, you know, do you know that, that coffee is biennial? You know what I mean by biennial? So they have a, a, a down year and then a good year. That's how the plants, they always have a plant with low yield and then the next year is a high yield and it cycles okay. that way. Yep. So they're on this year's a low yield. Next year's supposed to be the high yield, but but they've had a terrible frost and drought. So in uh, in Minas Gerais, and I'm going to pronounce that terribly sorry, and I apologize to all the, the Portuguese speaking uh, mm-hmm. people out there. Where? Uh, no, in Brazil, in the coffee <laughs> growing region of Brazil, the major coffee growing region, which uh, is... they've had, which is everyone knows where it's at, Max. Let's not go, let's not <laughs> let's not dwell on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they've had uh, they've had a frost so bad that it's killed the trees and then a drought and the drought has been um i was reading some i think it was on a reuters news thing uh which we reported on bartalks.net uh also which was the drought was the worst i think she'd seen in in like 15 years combined with this frost it's killed the trees next year is going to be a bit of a wipeout so coffee arabica prices have soared to a six and a half year high um, along with shipping costs, I, I won't be surprised if we see coffee going up in price because they're such an important market. But hey ho, there. Hey, let's not let's not build any any nuclear power plants. Let's what? What? My personal view on uh, on uh, global warming. Oh yeah, no. Look, um, global. <laughs> don't even get me started on the whole global warming thing. I think it's uh, I think it's a disaster that we're going on at the moment. Anyway, That's don't okay. get me started. I see that you've finally done your laundry because uh, that was that box of laundry behind you for, for like months after you moved into your place. And I, <laughs> it's and not I, laundry. And it well, you moved. say that, but that, well, that just goes to indicate that you don't wash your clothes because it was no, sitting also, there. I noticed that, that you have very, um, very yeah, clean no. observational skills. I don't know what you're talking about. As what? you haven't noticed that this is a whole new unit. <laughs> I have noticed this. I was, that was what I was working towards. Ah, right. Uh, unless it's a Zoom background, it's very hard to tell nowadays whether <laughs> anything's fake or real. Could you just knock on it a little bit so I know that it's real? I didn't hear that, but okay. Uh, you, there was some kind of spatial thing going on there, so I believe you. It was a special thing. And I see you've got your teddy bears there as well. So that's I have also, so you feel I, a little I bit more confident teddy now. Teddy bears, the... and uh, that, that's, there's also my, my sports cards uh-huh. that, I, that I pay with the, with the revenues from, from this channel, yeah. as, you, as, you, as you can tell. See? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, so I've you got, got the... an F40 there, you know? Yeah, so you can... Not messing that. around. No, that's fantastic. Um, well, look, I'm really glad that you've got a comfortable surrounding now and you feel a bit more confident on these podcasts. Um, yeah. You know, it's all about confidence, Max, building it up one step oh, at a yeah. time on the journey yeah, together. It has nothing to do with knowledge or anything. It's just confidence. Confidence. Well, yeah, that'll confidence. get you a lot of the way. That'll get oh, yeah. you a lot of the way. Um, yeah. So we're going to be talking about the ideas that we've got for improving the world of coffees because um basically i've had it on good i've had it on good um good advice that all the people met up recently uh Mm -hmm. the coffee manufacturers uh met up at a conference 
and the idea that it was called IdeaCon. Mm -hmm. And at IdeaCon, uh, they all got together to come up with ideas for, for how they could take what effectively is quite an old industry, how they could take it forward. And they had no ideas. And then somebody said, I've heard of this podcast called Bean Talk. Maybe we should write to them yeah. uh, and ask them to give us some ideas. So uh, I got that letter. I got the memo. And it said, Dear Nick, uh, we had this conference called IdeaCon. We, unfortunately, we had no ideas. Uh, we're looking to you. You're the savior of the industry. Please come up with something. So I thought I would um, spend five minutes giving it some thought. Uh, mm. Then I fell asleep. But I nevertheless woke up with a couple of ideas. And I thought we could, uh, we could talk about those. And I'm sure also you've got some pretty wacky oh, yeah. science-based um, theories uh, that we Many. could do as well. So... Who wants to kick it off? Shall I kick it off or do you want to kick of it course, off? Of course, I think you shall. <laughs> well, that makes you number two, that makes me which is you two. won't believe idea number two. So it better be you a, won't believe it. You won't be, actually, you won't believe it. You won't. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, my number one is a bit of an easy one. It's actually a bit of a, <laughs> it's a funny thing in that I spoke to, well, I actually had a, I had a call a couple of days ago with uh, one of the guys that, that watches the, the podcast it was the gentleman from Israel mm -hmm. and he's over in the UK and uh, Sergey. So hi, Sergey. And uh, so Sergey uh, is running a rocket R9. And, uh, and so one of my ideas I had, I was talking about it. It turns out they were already doing. So this is kind of a, but what they can do is they can put it on lower end machines. It's, it's an absolute no brainer. So here's the mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> which is <laughs> i'm just i'm building up to it it's a, it's a, it's a technique point. it's a no it's a technique it's, it's about building suspense so right. so how many times how do you use the water spout on on your espresso machine i'm making them color sorry i don't have one and you, sh you should not use it yeah it's it's a complete and i'll tell you why well you're going to go into reasons why you shouldn't use it mm -hmm. i'm going to explain why i don't use it and why i would use it even though i shouldn't use it if i could use it but i can't because of the thing i'm about to say mm -hmm. which is fixed by the other thing i didn't know actually had uh, had already been installed on some machines which is the thing's just damn too hot right so you turn this thing on you want to make a, an americano boiling water comes straight out of the boiler like boiling you want to make a cup well, of tea no, or something, it above, wrecks the tea. Boiling water. Hmm? It will be above boiling water, above boiling point, because remember that it's under pressure. So oh my God. being under pressure is not at 100 degrees. It's going to be at 120, 130. You're kidding me. No, I'm serious. Okay. Oh, I had no idea about that, but that explains what I kind of, that explains why I have third degree burns on my tongue uh, because. Yeah, well, I mean, it will go, it will go down to hundred, but uh, if you notice, you open the the tap, yeah. and uh, the first the first few seconds it's it's pouring out, yeah. And after a couple of seconds or three five, it depends how long is the travel, mm -hmm. it will start to, to flash boil off out of it. Mm -hmm. The reason flash for that boil. is that, yeah. The reason for that is that you have uh, the water is under pressure while it travels into the tubing it cools down to yeah. about 100 so it, it, it actually is water and after a while the the tubing gets warmed up to 110 120 whatever it is it will equilibrate and the water that comes out will actually be at above the boiling point and when it reaches the the when it loses the pressure it will start boiling so you have actually mainly steam coming out of it this is exactly this is exactly the point so but so but i will tell you more but but but, but gotcha. tell you what I, I already <sighs> solved that problem in the paros but anyway go but ahead. they've solved the problem in lots of places i just didn't i wasn't aware of it and it's not a, it's actually not in a lot of the a lot of the mainstream machines i just mm -hmm. jumped across to the um to the channel live i've got you in an action shot post frozen uh and uh mihailo milovanovic uh who's my my friend mm -hmm. hi mihailo uh he uh he has actually commented that it's not just confidence nick it's confidence and a great leather chair that you need to have uh so that's uh, that's an important um observation he's made but the other thing to to bring around <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a leather chair i don't sit down anymore mihailo buddy 
Uh, this is the thing we didn't get a chance to talk about. I, I have to stand all the time. Uh, it's good for you. And I actually got a little thing I walk on, but I don't do that on the podcast. I can I can afford to sit because I am naturally fit. Yeah, that's right. Um, I am in yeah. shape. Round is a shape. It is. A, yeah, it's Fight kind me. of a, it's kind of an aerodynamic <laughs> shape, isn't it? Very you know, round. Um, so so on the R9, Sergey was telling me how it you can switch a flick a switch. Mm hmm. And you can change the temperature. I think you flick a switch, or maybe you flick a switch on the um, on the Victoria Arduino, the mm -hmm. um, the Eagle One. The Eagle One definitely has this as well. But mm -hmm. anyway, you can control the temperature and bring it down to like you know a non-lethal uh, uh, <laughs> level, and which would just seem to be like a complete no-brainer. And yet, even expensive, expensive high-end machines like the Lamazoco Linear Mini. Don't mm -hmm. have that. You, they just spurt out boiling, boiling water. That is good. And I'll explain why. Mm. And actually, this is backed by Scott Rao, so not by you know any random guy on the street. Oh, okay. Scott Rao is kind of a god. Yeah. He, he knows his stuff. Um, you shouldn't use water from the coffee machine boiler mm -hmm. because it keeps boiling. It just keeps boiling. You will be taking steam out of it. Mm-hmm. And all of the salts, all of the all of the ions are going to just accumulate in the boiler. Eventually, mm -hmm. even if you have uh, the, the best deionizing water, deionizing system that you that you can, you mm -hmm. it won't be distilled water anyway. And even mm -hmm. if it was, you will still have a few ions coming through. Mm -hmm. They will eventually accumulate in the boiler. So you actually have a water in the boiler that is harder and nastier than the, the water that comes out of your tap mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you keep you keep taking the steam off so you, you keep taking the water off you top it up with, with other water and you mm -hmm. take the water out and you leave the ions in there so everything in there is going to just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate and eventually you're going to have really chalky water Got so it. the spout in the, in the coffee machine is only to clean off your stuff And mm -hmm. actually, from my point of view, is redundant mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you can't do it in a tap at home. Yeah. You don't need to have boiling water to do that. Mm. And if you have tea out of it, mm -hmm. even if you let it cool down a little bit until it gets to 90 degrees, and then you put your tea bag in, mm -hmm. it's still going to taste horrible. If you have your coffee machine for a while, let's say that you have it for about six months to a year, mm -hmm. it's going to have a lot of... of of salts built in and that it's dependent on how many cappuccinos you made, how, ma how much steam you take out of the boiler, but still, you still have a little bit of cycling. I, I think I understand what you're saying. Let me try and paraphrase it so that the audience yeah. can really understand. Basically what you're saying is blah, 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 science, blah, blah. <laughs> yes. And, and what I'm just my, just to refute that argument with something equally as eloquent Um, isn't that what we pay scientists to fix? I mean, you know, you, um, just, you take the stuff and you ionize it or put things back in. But I'd there's a better way. Well, I'd love to see the conversation between the people that made it. So if I'm spending four grand on, on a, a Victoria Arduino uh, Eagle One, yeah, and they've got this facility or a rocket Where does arm. it come from? That's, that's my question. Where does it uh -huh. come from? Does it come from the boiler or does it come from the group head? Because that's, that's two different things. Or maybe they heat it separately, which kind of maybe brings me on to another. Through the brew head or through the, the, the heat exchanger, which makes sense at that point. So if you have it going through the heat exchanger, that's mm -hmm. okay because it's fresh water that comes from the tap. Can I, can I just say I'm feeling very smug right now? Yeah, because I just said that's what we pay scientists to fix, and you already like sitting there, just like well, what you could do is you could, and then you're already. Fixing no, that's, the not, not, that's not what you could do; is what you should do. Okay, well, okay, well maybe that's done. what they do do. But who knows? Well, who knows? I know, but that's my thing. I had no idea that anyone was doing this because none done. of the machines that I've looked at within my price point, right? Which is like I spend up to a couple of grand. It's a gajaparos. Yeah, I know, but then you got all the other problems of being a gajaparos. So <laughs> I wish I don't know what they are, but the point is there's a lot of machines out there. If I want to have a choice of machines, a lot yes. of machines out there and the vast majority do not have that feature. And I have no idea why. Just put mm -hmm. it in, mate. 
That's idea number one for idea. Con. Absolutely. We should call this idea. Con. Maybe we should make a thing. Maybe yeah, I think talk. we should do that. We should do yeah. that. Definitely. I, I think it's already been done by the way, but anyway, so just take the water from the heat exchanger. That's it. Done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or maybe have an extra loop in the heat exchanger. These ideas so, are all patented by the way, in case no one's actually done them. I, so when I say patented, I'm, we're patenting. This is, this is a patent. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Send me a check and, uh, and we'll sort out a licensing <laughs> agreement. Max, I can over to you. It. Come up with a real one. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want a coffee machine like, um, like a gadget, but that doesn't have the problem of the gadget. So I want a saturated group head with a coil inside. So you have a heat exchanger plus a saturated group head that you can fine tune. And the saturated group head would be sitting on top of the, of the extraction block. Plus you have a, a separated um, heat exchanger and boiler on the side. So you can actually, if you want, you can have it as a st- steam and brew at the same time. Wait, 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 look, look. He's, can you see? Uh, oh, can you see around the? Can you see? Uh-huh. He's, he's making another coffee. <laughs> there he is. Can I help you? He's. <laughs> I know. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sorry about my sheets hanging up there, but at least you know that I'm keeping uh, keeping clean. You know, I do my laundry on on Sundays. Yeah. So, so I'm a bit to... annoyed by your idea, Max. It, Why? It's, well, because it was one of my ideas. <laughs> I was going to talk, about, except you said it better than me. And yeah, mine I... just didn't have any of the science stuff. It just had the one. I'm going to set off and do it. Oh, really? Are you really? I want to. Just don't you... have time to <laughs> do it. Okay, but I want to fly. <laughs> you know, well, it's not difficult. What, I have mine? a boiler. I oh. have a gadget hmm. done. Mm-hmm. And you can actually control the group head with a PID. So you already have the builds there. So Mr. Gadget, do it snappy. And yeah. Amy, thank you. Yeah. Well, that's what well, this is exactly. So basically what I tell you, my reasons for wanting it was because I'm tired of machines being so big and heavy and expensive. And I think a lot of, I was just trying to think, calculate where the costs of the machine come into so i don't know what gross margins these companies need to make uh, in order to be profitable Mm -hmm. um but you've got to believe that the cost of the materials has got to be one of the major costs going into into these machines right Mm -hmm. and so i'm thinking to myself why don't they innovate and put all this stuff in there and then i'm thinking well because it costs money but then i'm thinking it costs money they don't have because they spent that money on materials and so then I'm thinking, but what if they didn't need to put those materials in there? What can some of the benefits of that would be? Um, so actually, I think a lot of the uh, the follow-on benefits could mm-hmm. uh, could be uh, realized if they didn't have to spend the money on materials, which, by the way, from an accounting point of view, is a what we call a fixed cost. Like it's not going to, in fact, it's probably only going to go up in price because mm-hmm. you're mining this stuff. Um, it's not like, you know, you can say, let's take an example, you invest money, uh, into developing some software. All mm-hmm. right. So you've got a new interface on the machine and it does some clever stuff with some algorithms and you've paid a developer to think it through and they come up with the algorithms. Once you've got that and mm-hmm. you've encapsulated that into your control panel or whatever, mm-hmm. you can make as many copies as you want. You don't have to pay again for every copy. So you've got an upfront cost, which you capitalize, but the ongoing costs, that's it. They're free. Whereas if you're putting a copper boiler in there, that yeah. thing you buy every single time. So you've got to be a little bit smarter, I think. Yeah. So I think good idea, Max. Great idea. Um, the fact that you've actually got some ideas to how to materialize it, it blows me away. Uh, I would say <laughs> that. So number two was a doozy. Well done. Um, you won't believe I number did say two. You won't believe number two. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to come up with uh, with number three. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. So my number three actually leads on from number two. So it's really good you brought it up because it would have been difficult for me to do the segue if I hadn't have already raised this. And so my number. So yeah. Yeah, good for you. So what it comes down to is if, if you do what, what we're talking about, right? So this thermo um, doohickey and a saturated <laughs> group head. Well, I just don't, you know, I'm, I, I, I obviously understand it completely, 
but I, I don't want to, some of the audience may not be as technical as I am. Yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to lose them. Not um, enough, fair enough. So if you, uh, if you take the doohickey and you have a thermal coil or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, part of the issues around that are, are thermal stability is my understanding, mm -hmm. but I reckon that that's the kind of thing that can be solved with a bit of science, a bit of software. And I bet you they're already doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you go down that route, you then have saving money on boilers, right? Mm -hmm. Saving money on boilers. So I tell you, actually, this is, I've got two ideas in one. This is what's called a twofer, a two for one. Two for it's a two for two for one. It's kind of like a bog off buy one, get one free bog off, which is also kind of thing. So you're getting two ideas for the price of one. Oh, that's what, what, what that guy was telling me, bugger off. It was like... uh, yeah. He said bog off mate. Um, right, yeah, that's right, exactly right. what he was saying. He was saying there's probably a great deal yeah. uh, that you can get. Yeah, the, he was the, trying to draw you should go to. right now. Yeah. You should go right now and find that deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so there's, there's these two things, right? So the first is, that nobody, as and we've talked about this once before, nobody is building a single boiler type machine or a machine that is really made for just espresso drinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got the decent, maybe but that's kind of a special case. I should have done this. Does the decent have a steam wand? It has a steam wand. Ah, so, so no one's doing a it. A good one, actually. Okay, well, so no one's doing this. I don't care about the steam one. And I tell you for two reasons. Not mm -hmm. just that I own, that I only drink espresso, because mm -hmm. occasionally I might want to do something like once a year. Uh, I might want to make hot cocoa at Christmas with my steam mm -hmm. wand. Um, yeah. That's absolutely fine. You may but want his... to cook. Uh, you may want to cook uh, custard cream with it. I hadn't thought about that. I Don't have get me done thinking. that. I have done that, and it and it works really well. So, Mr. James Hoffman and Mark. Ah, but it depends on how whatever. how much steam is coming through you. Because if you've got that really no. powerful steam wand, it's going to explode. You're going no, to get it wouldn't on explode. Your face. It wouldn't explode. It's a matter of doing the right thing. They were cooking eggs with it, which is a silly idea. But if you add eggs, that. if you add if you add egg yolks to milk and you add sugar to it and mm. and corn flour. You can actually make a really nice custard cream, and if mm. you if you cook it instead of boiling it, if you cook it with um, with a steam wand, it actually in includes a lot of air, and it gets really fluffy. It's really nice. So I will eventually make uh, a, a video of a recipe of it or something. Mm. I can't That's help how you feeling should. you're. I can't help feeling you're trying to hijack my ideas and my time. You know, because it's my turn. Sorry, you go ahead. Okay, if you are you sure are you finished? Probably. Okay. So, um, so no one's making a single espresso <laughs> machine, right? Like yeah. they're just, just making espresso. No. And but here's the thing you say, well, but, oh yeah, but you know, I, I like to drink milk drinks sometimes. Well, you know what? You can get these great milk frothers. Mm -hmm. I know people like to think that they they can do a better job with the milk one, but chances are you probably can't um, unless you're doing it regularly. And I think there's enough people out there that do it sometimes or that do it infrequently but when they do do it they're not going to do a great job just get a milk frother from amazon mm -hmm. That's they actually, actually work pretty point. well you know yeah. and it, so so you can have that and then you want to froth the milk froth it heats it and froths it completely separately and then have a machine that just makes great espresso so you basically you're telling people to buy an espresso machine an espresso yeah. setup for just espresso that's right so you don't need two boilers but you can get <laughs> what what's so funny N nespresso oh nespresso no i'm that's not saying that <laughs> no but no they have capsules only and they have their they have their virtua capsule which is patented uh, and you can't nah, that's rubbish the old one the old one yeah uh -huh. yeah okay but then okay but then the old one is limited by the amount of coffee you can put into a capsule and and there's all sorts of reasons let's not go there max <laughs> stop it stop it now um so what i'm saying is you get an espresso machine that is just espresso yeah. and for all the money that you say so imagine that that the the cinquecento did i say that right wow I'm i practiced. am impressed i know right yeah that's wow. right i said it so the the rocket cinquecento <laughs> i've said a couple times okay uh that i've got which has got like it cost whatever but two isn't two, it cinquantotto oh, i can't remember damn it <laughs> it's too really? much cinquecento what is cinquecento? No, that's 500 then? They're like way off. Uh, well, okay. So maybe the Cinquecento could be the machine that I'm thinking of, right? Because it's that far ahead. Yeah. Or, or it could be a car. <laughs> or it could be a they car. It could, could look like the car. They could make the Cinquecento espresso machine. It's going to be a huge hit. Amazing. This is a threefer right now. This is a threefer idea. All right. Yeah. And, and you take the, the, you know, the machine 
and you make it as espresso only. Mm-hmm. You have a separate thing in me if you want to have one for, yeah. for steaming milk. And but actually, the, you mm-hmm. can even buy steam frothers if you really want to use a steam that's, one. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? I would still spend that two and a bit grand on that machine, especially if they used the money they saved from not having a second boiler and all the silly stuff that I don't use and threw it into some of the neat features that I'm mm-hmm. going to come on to one next, but the other one we just talked about, such as controlling the, you know, the water spout or whatever, but then having a better thermo control, thermo stability, mm-hmm. a better menu, all that kind of nice stuff in there, make a really cool, smaller machine, high quality, put all really the best quality parts in it. And, and I would still pay the two grand for that and not feel, you know, not feel shortchanged at all. Mm-hmm. So, so what could they do? Let me give you one practical example of what they could do with all that extra money they've now saved that they can put into the machine, right? Mm-hmm. Integrated scales on the, uh, on the doohickey. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing, actually. That would be a brilliant thing. Yeah, yeah. And it can't we- cost that much. And, well, ask Victoria Duino. Because they actually have it, I think. I know. Google Lots have it. They have it, and it was really complicated. But it's not the scale itself that is complicated; it's the algorithm. It's, it's the feedback, which is why I'm talking about the software, and you capitalize that up front. So what we're talking about now is basically you're making your coffee, right? And mm. it sits on the on the drip tray, which is also yeah. now a scale. <clears throat> exactly. And as the coffee's coming through, not only is it going, is it weighing it, but it's timing. It's, you know, the, 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 as the weight goes up and it's working out from that, how, what the flow rate is, Ooh. right? Yeah. You okay. see, see the value you're getting. And not only is it working out the, the average flow rate, it can work out whether the flow rate is increasing, it was decreasing, you know, whatever. Da, da, da. So it can actually take a look and it can, it can do some math on the back. Now mm-hmm. I've done this math in detail uh x equals over carry the one right it was it was quite complicated i want to go into detail here Mm -hmm. but i did all the math and i decided that it's quite possible to work out the flow rate and to infer from that yeah what um you know what what mistakes you may have made and how you might want to change your uh your coffee grinds or your pot preparation or whatever else you're doing in order Mm -hmm. to get a better espresso how's that that's actually a very good idea. I was, uh, I, it's one thing I was thinking about when I was, uh, when I was doodling with, with ideas to make, um, to modify the gadget. Mm-hmm. Because integrating a scale in the, cof- in the drip tray is actually very simple. Mm-hmm. Calibrating it might be a little more complicated, but integrating it is actually simple. You get a pie- piezoelectric uh, thing, and that's, yeah, it. That- that's it. Thing. And you have to measure up to 50 grams. 100 maybe maximum so it's not a massive range and you can actually put put it down and say yeah this is the this is the start this is zero mm-hmm. hit go and um, stop when it reaches because the thing is if you have a three way solenoid valve you can actually stop more or less um, at the same at the right time you can actually time it you can learn it and say mm-hmm. Stop two ml, two grams before thirty six. Yeah, because it knows it's going to drip a little before. bit and yada 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 yeah. and yeah. So you stopped. Now it's actually for the delay in the feedback because a lot of the scales, if you notice, they actually are are delayed, mm-hmm. and you have to integrate that into the into the algorithm. But that is always the same. Mm. So stop. Two grams, bef- let's say, uh, fix, stop two grams before ta- before the target. So I want 36 grams out, mm-hmm. and you can punch it in, mm-hmm. and we stop at 34. And even if it's uh, 30, even if it ends up in being 36 and a half or 37, it's mm-hmm. always going to be 37 because robots are stupid, but are very consistent. Yeah, they're consistent. You might have a, this is, yeah. You might have an error, but it's systematic. Mm-hmm. So it's always plus one. Let's say you have an error of one. Right? It's always there. It's always that. So you can work it in your routine. Got you. Perfect. And that's brilliant. So, that's a brilliant idea. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, over to you, Max. What's your what's your next idea? Yeah, actually, I'm thinking I'm thinking how to integrate that. It would be amazing to have a switch that is uh, a smart like I switch. Say, patented. All right, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Um, sorry, that, that really threw me off. I'm actually really. But you're actually surprised I had a good idea. Thanks. No, it's uh, I'm not surprised. I'm just thinking now about it because it's brilliant. All right. I've got two more ideas. Just so you know, just to wow. be on track. I've got two, two more ideas. ideas. Oh, I don't the, have the best. I'm saving the best to last wow. as well. Mind blowing. Um I'm, I'm sorry, I am I'm really I'm really into that. Shall I go with my next one? <laughs> you want to go shall I go with my next one? You want to no, go? No, 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 no. So oh, I've yeah. seen recently on Alexa or uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> the Lavazza Alexa machine? No, no, not that, because that's a Lavazza Modo Mio that's capsule based. No, yeah. I have seen uh, the, the, a, small, uh, a smart brewer, which is brilliant to an extent. And uh, the idea there, I think, is very good. You have these, uh, this coffee brewer, which is filter for, for filter coffee, and you can actually... Uh, schedule your routines and uh, you can you can ask it to make a coffee and it will make a coffee or a, mm -hmm. a filter coffee mm. so a pour over coffee which is great the drawback of it is that it will also grind the coffee for you so you actually have coffee beans sitting on the machine there which is convenient but I can't see a bit of a drawback on that because obviously we'll be sitting there heating up and being exposed to heat moisture so I would like to have something slightly different where the, the two things are slightly separated from, from each other. They're far, further away. Hmm. And maybe, maybe I would also like to have a, a, a chamber for the grinder that gets vacuumed. Yeah. Well, they have bellows on some of them, don't they? You've seen some where you push down and it pumps it out. That, they yes, they look that very pumps, ugly. That, that pumps out the... the the grounds. Yeah. I would want um, actually the beans to be fed into the grinder. Uh -huh. and, then, and, then I, and then you close that mm -hmm. and you vacuum the beans again. Oh, okay. That's actually really interesting. That's a really interesting idea. It's got a new way of, yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's potentially a little bit complicated, but you can find it. It's very complicated, to... but you know, if money is not a problem, that would be great to, to be able to store beans because, I mean, Yes, you're going to go through the, 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 the hopper relatively quickly, but what is relatively quickly? Hmm. Let's, let's say you make an average of two, two pour-overs a day. That's 60 grams a day. Hmm. 60 grams a day is 10 days of, uh, of beans sitting there. Of, of course, you can say, yeah, well, you don't have to have all the beans in there or at, the, at all the time. Yes, but then that prevents the, con the convenience of having the beans there and forgetting about it. Yeah. If I have to to make sure that I have the beans before I set I set it off, I might as well just do it. I think it's a great idea. It's a very valid that that deserves a place on this uh, on on IdeaCon. Uh, congratulations! Yeah, yeah. All right, my next idea. My next idea is uh, I don't know if anyone's doing this yet. I, I have mentioned this before, um, but I still I I my own prior art, as they say in <laughs> uh, patent uh, patenting law. Um, but uh, I, th I think that machine manufacturers should be working with the coffee companies and that those coffee companies. Now, if you, what you need to this is you need some feedback on the system. So it's kind of dependent upon maybe putting some of these other things we've talked about in place. But once you've got those in place, what you should do is you should get to a place where you've got a whole integrated system. You probably need the grinder and everything else to all to be set up with the same system. Let's have mm -hmm. a barcode scanner. Mm -hmm on your uh, coffee equipment and you take your bag of beans and your bag of beans has a barcode on the back. And so again, with all that money you save by not putting all that stupid stuff we don't need in, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everyone else like uses it except for me, but this is how I, this is all about me. Once again, uh, I would hold my bag up to the uh -huh. scanner. It would scan the bag yep. and it would go, Oh, okay. You've got the, you know, farm to home Ethiopian, blah, blah, blah. Here's how we recommend you make it. By the way, whilst you know, whilst you just pour it in, I'll just change the settings for you. Mm -hmm. right? So it changes all the settings up for you. How do you like your coffee? I said, well, you know, I like a little bit more. I like it quite a little bit acidic. So I said, okay, fine, a little acidic. Uh, we recommend um, the temperature is set for 93 degrees for this one, Nick. Said, yep, fine. I'll accept all of the 
recommended settings or I can change them. Mm -hmm. And I hit the button and it basically just brews the coffee or makes grinds the beans, gets everything set up in the way that it should be absolutely perfect. And then does the brewing again for the time settings that it knows because it's done the grinding and everything else for that particular type of coffee. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, because you're connected to the internet, right? And this is, and I, this is a, this is about, I've got a, this is a double-edged sword. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to, to do anything like stupid, group collaboration stuff on the, I, I kind of want to be isolated and I do my coffee. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of a group making coffee. Right. I don't want to yeah. do that. But what I do want to do is I do want to, I'd be willing to share anonymously how I like my coffee going to make it so I can go off on my own. I can accept their recommendations or I can play and I can make my own recipe. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can save that down. And then if I could be set to share, it can say, you're yeah, trying not to hurt yourself, Max. It's a dangerous business. This we're in. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Are you okay? You want to get the teddy bear yeah, behind you? I just need to bang his elbow. Okay. Um, so if you imagine that you can either accept the recipe mm -hmm. or you could scroll through popular recipes that other people like, you know, that they've mm -hmm. used the same coffee and it wouldn't say your name. It would just go, 23 people really gave, like, gave this recipe five stars. And then you could try that recipe and rate it, or you could have your, or upload your own recipe and make it, and other people would rate it. So I think someone should start this by making a website. Well, I've got a website. Exactly. Ow. Someone should <laughs> stop copying me. Stop it. <laughs> someone <laughs> should, should actually make a website mm -hmm. where, um, where you can collect these things as a database. Yeah, I know. But the thing is, it doesn't mean anything until you, because it's a lot of entry. What you want to have it do is integrate with your coffee machine. And that's not going to happen in the start the with the it. website. Okay. All right. Let's just... It starts with a website that someone, well, someone should mm. put up. Mm -hmm. And um, and you go from there. You already have the database. You have the the repository of of information mm -hmm. then you can work with it you can you can have uh, statistics you can have um, self-learning algorithm you can have, i'll tell you, you why that won't work things i think it won't work because you've got to have the consistency of different machines and this is this is so i'm actually being so if me making a recipe with my setup and someone else doing another recipe with a different setup mm -hmm. completely different results are you sure no i'm not sure but it sounded smart and, and what, what I would expect, right? What I'd expect, because you can't sort of say, you know, grind to what grind setting, right? To what grind setting should it be? So you've mm -hmm. got to really got to have the manufacturers behind it where they say, we know that this is going, you know, this is the right grind setting for this Until coffee. Until you and, clean it. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> and of course, the look, I didn't say, look, I'm not the, I'm the ideas guy. All right. So my idea <laughs> Is to is to at a starting point uh -huh. say we should be able to scan these coffees, mm -hmm. see about the coffees because the very least you could do is have the machine actually display what the coffee is, where it's from, the farm, the guy, da da da. You know, you could send them a little thank you, send them you know a couple of pennies as a thank you, send them fifty pence or whatever. Mm -hmm. it goes across to him, so it all could be integrated into the machine. It could be integrated if you had a nice display. You can't yeah. have a nice display because it costs money. Costs money that they don't have because they've got two boilers and they've got all the other bits and pieces that I don't need. Or you can have an app. <gasps> I don't want to have it as an app. I don't want to say it loud. I, sort of, I know. I know we're going back to it. I know this is sort of what I sort of don't want. To, I want to have it on the machine, but I, 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 I'm probably not the normal demographic for this, yeah. I, I would imagine. But that's my idea. My idea would be to look and identify ways mm -hmm. in which we can start to bring the actual mm -hmm. coffee you're drinking and the machine that's preparing those drinks together mm -hmm. in a more integrated way than currently it works because currently there is no integration at all. And I'm saying that it might be possible to create some kind of integration between the two and some of it won't work, but some of it might. Yeah. As long as it's um, as long as you can actually get, in the in the right ballpark with uh, with the machine, so I'm thinking mainly Sage actually could do that. 
I'm thinking that I should did mention Sage before as being yeah. as what they should do. Sage is one of the ones that could do that. Uh, yeah. Decent is another one that could do that. However, they don't have a they don't have the grinder integrated in there, mm. so that's the drawback. Plus, we are talking of two different things. With the Sage, you have a user base that is very, very wide. You have people that buy any sort of coffee from the supermarket to people that actually start buying specialty coffee. On the Sage, I bet <coughs> whatever you want <coughs> that people don't really put um, <coughs> supermarket bought beans down their Sage unless they have more money than cents. Mm. Which, I mean, they have a Sage, so probably that's, that's already the case. But... Oh, sorry, not a sage. They have a, a decent, so that, that's probably mm -hmm. already the, the, the case. However, with small roasters, they might actually have the same coffee from the same farm, mm. but they have different roasters. Mm. And a different person is roasting. So yeah. how much does that change? How much does that impact the flavor? How much does, does that impact the, the roasting profile? How much a different roaster machine and person how much the, the the different location of the roaster because it has a different air what is the air supply what is uh, around it how much does that affect the flavor profile actually affects it quite a lot um if you go to our website being uh, which is bartalks.net um we had a story that we did on cropster which is a software company uh that uh, does software uh, for roasters and mm -hmm. um, i think it was in the last couple of months they launched a new version uh, funny enough i'm pretty sure it was with scott rao uh, who worked with them to ensure consistency from roast to roast and they were looking at at, at their software being modified to take into account the current temperature or the starting temperature of the drum for example mm -hmm. Because if your drum started at a different temperature, which it would do every time, it, you've got to take that into account when starting your roast profile. If you apply the same roast profile, no matter what temperature your drum starts at, you'll get different results. And um, yeah, so that was the, it's it's they're they're working on being able to go from batch to batch to batch consist consistency. Mm -hmm. I think they call it next batch protocol. So that's the thing to look up on the site if you want to read the story. Yep. Next batch protocol, and it is literally about how to make that consistency happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I work with something similar. I don't roast things, but I, I do chromatography, which, which is extraction. And um, doing one run, one extraction, uh, and then stopping or doing seven in a row actually makes a difference. So you need to have everything equilibrated. Sometimes you need to do two runs before you do the one that counts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got a... Um... We've got a, a message here. I can't believe I actually checked the chat window. Wow. Uh, oh, look, if I scroll down, I can reply. <laughs> oh, no, look at that. <laughs> I just scroll down. Hold on a second. It's Amin, Amin E. Hey, guys, hope you're doing well. Turn in a bit late today. Great topic again. Uh, I think she's probably referring to the stuff I'm talking about. Of course. Thanks. Uh, I mean, see, you can't do anything because you haven't logged on. Uh, no, I haven't. Thanks, Amin. Lovely to see you here. Uh, so it's a good uh, thing that Nick is a very fast typist. How about fluid bed roasting? Well, Ooh, that's a very technical a very subject. I mean, and I'm going to hand over to Max because I don't want to confuse you with so this. fluid bed roasting. That's very interesting. Actually, it's a great idea. The wait, drawback wait, wait. Can you is just for, for some of the audience, not including me. Could you explain so fluid, -based fluid bed roasting, roasting is based on uh, roasting with air. So air or gases in general. So oh. you, it's, uh, it's the same system as uh, spray drying. So you, ha you actually have uh, um, gas that is, blown, that is blown at a temperature against the, the beans, and the beans are actually floating. They, don't, they just float around. So it's much more efficient in terms of roasting and heat transfer to the, to the beans. It's like using a ventilated oven versus a static oven. Oh, okay. you, you break the the what is called the um, um, boundary effect, so you don't have a, a gradient of air that forms around the, the coffee bean, but you blast that away, so you actually have hot air around the bean, fresh hot, fresh new hot air 
around the bean all the time. So you have a much more efficient heat transfer into it. And uh, the fluidized bed is actually a great idea, but it's very expensive and it only works with very large batches. So it's what the, uh, the big companies use, for example, um, namely Lavazza, Illy. Uh, when you have a large, a large production, you can roast a huge amount of beans at the same time. Um, you can't scale that down very effectively. It's a, it's a very... Wait, wait, is that what it, is that not the same system Ikawa uses? They use uh, air roasting. Who? Ikawa, the little home, the, the UK roaster. Yes, the popcorn roasters. Popcorn that's a, roaster. That's a similar I thing. I don't think that's the way they want to describe themselves, but yeah. Well, no, but they're called actually popcorn roasters because you actually have popcorning around. That is an option. The only issue with that is it's much less consistent, obviously. I heard that, yeah. So because because the uh, at those scales the heat transfer is better actually in in a drum because you can control the drum. That is exactly what. Funnily enough, I did an interview six or seven or eight or nine or I can't remember. Maybe it was a few years ago. I can't remember. But it was with a um, U.S. company that makes sample roasters, and they made um they made a new sample roaster. Mm -hmm. And I asked him that question, well, what about, because it's still, you know, it's a big machine and it still costs money and da, da, da. And I kind of tentatively asked, I said, well, but, you know, you can get a sort of in a suitcase, you can get the Sakawa roasters. And he said, yeah, but it's not the same thing for two reasons. One, like what you just said. And two, he said, this is particularly related to sample roasting, mm -hmm. is that you cannot go from an air roasted system to a drum roasted system. You can't exactly. profile on an air roasted system, then go to a drum roasted system. And it doesn't you work. You can't scale it up. So the sample roaster is, I'm going to try this profile on a small amount of coffee. It's like when you taste, when you test um, a little bit of paint in an inconsistent area or something, you try it. Uh, okay, this is, this works. This, this tastes good. Upscale it in a bigger in a bigger drum, which will have similar characteristics, and that's why these things are so expensive, because they're actually scaled down, and there's a lot of engineering going on into that. So the the way that you transfer heat to the beans in a small sample roaster from the same brand should be, and I I am ninety ninety nine percent sure it is the same way that you transfer it in a bigger one. Mm -hmm. make a roaster because obviously otherwise it wouldn't work but what i'm thinking is actually what what is the impact of the air that goes in and actually that's a very big difference because if you have an electric roaster it will give you different flavor profile from a gas roaster from a gas burner roaster because what you introduce with a gas burner roaster is the exhaust of the gas burn same when we tried the coffee from, from Italy that was um, um, wood roasted. It had that woodiness, that kind of ash flavor mm -hmm. to it, which, which comes from the roasting process. So how does was that... It, was that nice? It was nice. It was nice until someone tried to do a double espresso with it and <laughs> didn't realize that probably loading 18 grams... Or no, 21 mm -hmm. grams in one coffee it was probably not a good idea. Who did that? You did. Uh, and I you thought did. it might have been me. I actually can't remember you that. You probably still taste it. sounded like me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was so solid. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. All right. There, by the way, there's a, um, there is a, uh, talking about things that shouldn't be mixed. There's a, you know, they, you can go down to Tesco's and you can buy uh, coffee flavored wine now. Uh, this is a, uh, Brazil Arabica, and they call it, it's like the 19 criminal, 19 something criminal. Um, it's, I think it's one of the biggest, it's from the biggest or one of the biggest wine companies in the world. So Australian wine company. And they call it like the, I think it's the nine criminals, 19 it's a, criminal. No, it's a 21, 21st century criminal. No. Oh, 21st uh, century. I get you. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's oh. based on all the, the people that were sent to Australia now, um, as uh, for crimes, uh, for, for various crimes sent to Australia. And anyway, to, to honor that, they paid off their they've debts? mixed the coffee. With it. I don't know what it is. I don't know why they, they, they call it that. I mean, but, uh, literally everything that moves in Australia can and wants to kill you. And you also True. want to do this awful thing of putting coffee in wine. Why? The fascinating thing yeah. is go to Tesco's. I was writing a story about it, uh, and which is, which, yeah. And um, so I had to go and do a bit of research. Uh, do you know that you can get... You should try it. 
I don't want to try. I you read the try review. it. I read the reviews. Live. I know. No, you just you want to see my try face. It. I don't really drink. And um, a couple of people really <laughs> like that's coffee. But, but apparently there's a very strong coffee flavor to this wine. Um, but most people found it utterly repulsive. Uh, <laughs> I don't even... We're gonna it doesn't end sound this. good even in my head. It doesn't sound good in the head. No. Um, I also bought, and I feel ripped off. I've got to find the email. I bought a bunch of uh, chocolate beer uh, from, it was, a, it was a collaboration between Tony Chocolonis and, uh, and Brewdog. And it was a raspberry, raspberry white chocolate beer uh, that I bought, uh, which I was fascinated to try, but, um, but they never sent it to me. They never That's did. Ex- I bought a six pack. No, I think they had other things in their mind when they got busted for, I don't know, something they've done. They're in the news recently for doing a lot of bad stuff. Um, Brewdog. Brew, Brewdog, yeah. Oh yeah. They're in trouble. So I think they just, they skipped my order. Let's wrap it up there, Max, because I'm yeah. just, you know, going into the rambling mode. But I think we had some good ideas there. Yeah, uh, don't forget to idea. do the paperwork and get all of those uh, patents filed by the end of this weekend. Uh, yes, I, I don't want to lose a window of opportunity before these other companies leap on our great, you know, ideas. Just call me. Just call me. <laughs> uh yeah no don't call max money um feel free to send checks uh to me i'll let you know actually you know who sends checks anymore you know who sends checks the government because they know that you just you can't bank them so (laughs) that's how they keep their money but what do you guys think what what does everyone think what have we missed what have we missed i'm sure other people can have ideas let give us your ideas so that we can make money off them yes Uh, that's what i want to say Yes. Or, or do you want to work with us? Uh, or yes, absolutely. If you have the ideas and you want to work to make it a reality, uh, we'll definitely partner with you so that, um, that yeah, yeah, like we don't do very have, much at all. Yeah, we're going to be freeloading all the time. <laughs> we'll free- but for example, if you, if you are a roaster or if you are um, a coffee machine maker, work with us. Oh, here we go. Hey, hold on a second. I mean, it's just saying a few things. Uh, proclaim to add consistency into the roasting process while being energy efficient, even smaller in size than the classical drum roasters. Usually the guys, uh, Unsin, Ikawa have some kind of mapping table access to transfer the profiles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're probably absolutely right. I don't know. I'm not an expert in this. Uh, Max probably knows a lot more than I do. Or, and having said that, the roasting company I was talking to that makes roasters makes drum roasters. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're probably a little bit biased. But um, even with a mapping table, you know, it's a bit like um, I can imagine it's not a, an exact science. Right. I can imagine. So I, I, I think there's probably a, a certain amount of nuances that are lost. Um, mm-hmm. I am not an expert, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. There's also another thing. Um, when you when, when you use um, a fluidized bed, you actually have a lot of gas blowing through. So you might actually blow off some of the flavors that might you might want to retain. Um, it, this is just me going out of a, on, on a limb, but I don't know specifically. I, I use I use similar things and i know that they're different it's different to scale them down to to a sample roaster and they normally work with uh, uh, with larger quantities because they're they're more efficient in that way but in a smaller in a smaller environment you also have to think that this that a, ro- a small roaster has to fit these stuff into their shop and their shops are not in uh, uh, not always in uh, in incredibly big um you know industrial compounds that probably they have a, a room or two rooms the size of a normal room so you're looking at a two and a half meter ceiling maximum and this kind of stuff fluidized beds they require gases they require supplies they require um probably different different health and safety uh, approach as well they they require they, they probably are different heights so it, I'm not sure they're easy to put in a normal or, or a, a smaller environment, in a small roaster environment. They could be good, uh, but a lot of know. roasters are are in in urban environments as well. Yes. You know, yes. so this is the thing. They're not out in an industrial park miles away. A lot of them are actually quite quite sort of local. Um, so let's wrap it up there, Max, because I've got, you know, laundry to do and yeah. stuff. Things to do. I got things. I haven't done my, I haven't done my weekly clean yet. So I got to have things to be, call places my mom, to call my sister. 
called Mahilo, who was trying to call me as we started this show, which is why he was on earlier on. <laughs> so uh, listen, my friend, it's really great. Next week is the week that we're supposed to be announcing the winner, but we're not because we're taking a week off. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I had, we're not really taking a week off because I've already done another interview, mm-hmm. cheated on you, Max, and I, and I, had, uh, I, had, a, <laughs> I had a session with Sergey. Um, who's over from Tel Aviv, he's over here in the UK. Uh, and we had a session to him talking about the Rocket R9 and his, and his um, you know, his sort of uh, methodology of working and what the, what the coffee industry and culture is like in Tel Aviv, which is kind of very thriving, kind of interesting. Travels everywhere with a flair in his suitcase. Uh, and my kind of guy, my kind of guy, really. <laughs> um, so uh, so I, did a, I did a little chat with him. So I'll publish that next week to get out of the fact that I'm not going to be around. It's both my father and my sister's birthday on the same day. Wow. Uh, I know. It's an expensive time of year, uh, and I will be away with them and not on the show with you. So I'll publish that instead, which means that next week we won't announce uh, who won the Farm to Home Coffee. Uh, we'll just have to keep you in suspense. I'll actually put it on the website, and I'll and obviously let the person know. And then we'll announce it the week after. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Fantastic. All right, my friend, you have a great rest of the Sunday. Go out and enjoy the thunderstorms. And uh, yes, free showers. Free showers. I will talk to you in two weeks' time. Mm-hmm.